Morning everyone, welcome to the driveway. After looking at the demographics of who watches my channel, I feel like this video is not going to have immensely widespread, but I figured I might as well make it anyway because this is something I do to every car that I really care about the look of it. Now for a little bit of backstory on my personal car modification taste, I like in a daily a car that a normal person will look at and not think that there's anything modified about it. Something that could conceivably have come from a factory, whether as a factory upgrade package or what have you. So ridiculous body parts or wheels that really don't match the style really aren't my thing. And I also like to do things on a budget without being overly cheap. So for me, stock wheels with the car sitting just right is pretty ideal for me, but stock wheels don't sit out very far. They're kind of sunken into the wheel wells, which is kind of the story with a lot of cars. Like here's a picture of my NA Miata when it was stock, and then here's another picture of my NA Miata. What's the difference here? Well, aside from the color of everything, lowering springs and spacers. Here's a picture of my NC Miata. And then here's another picture of my NC Miata. What's the difference? Lowering springs, and in this case, wider wheels. But the lowering springs and spacer combo seems to pretty much be the most effective way to make a car just look good in a way that a lot of people can't necessarily articulate. Uh, so that's what we're doing today to the E92. So I bought these, uh, affiliate link down in the description. So the guy just notices uh, these are Dino Fit brand and these are KSP, but they're definitely the same company. Look at this. They both say wheel accessories, high quality. And then this one just says for more support on the front. And then there's like no more information. So I don't know what you do for more support. Uh, so let's talk about wheel spacers real quick and what you need to look for. First off, they gotta be hub centric. Do not buy wheel spacers that are not hub centric. And I guess I'll show you what that is. This is a hub centric wheel spacer. Very easy for me to say, and looking at it, I love the way this is made. Look at that. The logo is nice on there. Uh, it actually says that it's 6061 T6 aluminum. Don't get um, distracted by terms like military grade or aircraft grade. The crappiest aluminum in the world is aerospace grade for certain uses. You really care about what specific type of aluminum it is, but um, the important part is this flange here, which the wheel sits on, and also a recess on the opposite side to fit onto the hub, and also these notches to pry it off of the wheel in case it gets uh, stuck on there. This is all just beautiful. <laughs> I love this. Now this is a slip-on one that'll re that would reuse your stock studs if you had them or extended studs if you had them, but in this case, I have wheel bolts. This is a substantial chunk of aluminum that's really not gonna break unless you like get something behind it and then tighten it down over it and it cracks, like if you have a pebble back there. What's gonna happen is crappy studs are gonna become your problem or crappy wheel nuts or wheel bolts. My gosh, they sell aluminum wheel bolts for some reason. Don't ever do that. They sell aluminum lug nuts too. Never do that. Aluminum fasteners are, the, the BMW uses them. They connect accessories to the engine, but they're one-time use only because they stretch. You don't, don't put that on your wheels. So here we've got our spacers. I got two of these 15 millimeter ones for the rear, and then I believe I got some 12s for the front, and I got extended steel uh, wheel bolts to go with them, and from what I've seen on the internet, this will give my car the perfect OEM Plus look for not very expensive. This was all about $100. Affiliate links in the description. I also got the most annoyingly packaged wheel bolts in existence. Each wheel is in a bag, and then each bolt is... There we go. Wow, that, that coating sucks. Okay, already don't recommend these. Ugh. Slip that guy on there. Very nice. And then here's a look at our extended lug bolts versus the factory ones. That ought to do her. All right. Let's put this wheel back on. It really doesn't get much simpler than this, except for the fact that I put the camera in the way. 
Well, the suspension's gonna settle down a little bit when I drive it, but oh man, <laughs> look at that. That is perfectly flush in front. Rear is just a skosh sunken in, but let's compare that to the other side where, uh, where's the wheel? Where's the wheel? Where's, oh, 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 there it is. And then the back is just uh, kind of a travesty actually. And uh, so these, 12 and 15 millimeter specs. Uh, the community kind of figured this out for me. I just found a guy who was running spacers on his uh, stock wheels and asked, hey, how much spacer have you found works for you with a stock tire size without rubbing? Because I didn't want to have to stretch tires or anything to get it to not, you know, hit here or have to remove fender liners or anything like that. But I think that is such a solid look for just $100 investment. It looks so much more aggressive without being shouty. Also, I don't know what's up with these front wheels, but that's like a stain. You can't clean that off. I don't know what's going on there. All these wheels have been refinished in the past and I think they just did a bad job, but man, I am a fan. Let's get the other side done and then go grab the torque wrench and get all these things torqued down. Jake, that's gonna wear out your bearings because now the fulcrum point is further out. Well, you know what else moves the fulcrum point out? Wider wheels. Anytime that you ride up on the shoulder, which is every time you corner. So it's the exact same thing. And they would consider wider wheels to be doing it properly. But um, even if it does wear out bearings faster and you're placing them every 70K instead of every 100K, who, who cares? It's, it's well amortized the cost throughout that period of time. Anyway, effectively, I don't care. I've made that risk assessment that I might have to replace a part that I'm gonna have to replace anyways slightly sooner than normal. It looks good. This is the kind of thing that's gonna make me turn around and look at my car when I walk into a building. And it's the kind of thing that I'm gonna be the only one that really notices it because I'm the only one who knew what it looked like before. And that's kind of how I like it. It's subtle, but dang, is it good. Thanks for watching.